Good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining this session of the Warrant Committee, uh, April, I'm uh, sorry, August 9th, 2021. Our first order is to uh, review uh, slash approve the minutes that were sent out for meetings March 29, April 5th, April 26th, May 3rd, 4th, 6th, 10th, 11th. Um, several of those were, of course, associated with the uh, annual town meeting. Uh, so, uh, for the, I'm, I'm hoping everybody received everything. I'm not sure, George, so I'll have to abstain on that one. Okay, that's fine. But please double check. If you have not received them, we can send them. If you have received them and we can have a motion to approve those minutes uh, for those dates, um, that would be great. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. second. Second, uh, any discussion? Short of an abstention, um, uh, all in favor? Yeah, uh, can, you take, can you take the roll, please? Sure, um, do you want me to do attendance first, George? Um, yeah, of course, we could, I, we, we, yeah, I, I thought that's what we did when we first started to see if we had the quorum, but you can do attendance and then we'll take the vote. Okay, uh, we have John, Kathy, Stephen, Kristen, Dave, Lorraine, George, and Muhammad. And Chase okay. has joined our call from the DPW. And Terrific. now I'll take roll call, please. I mean, um, voting. The vote. Uh, John. Yes. Kathy. Same. Stephen. Yes. Kristen. Yes. Dave. Yes. Lorraine. Yes. George. Yes. And Muhammad. Aye. Okay. Terrific. Um, now we have, uh, as we reviewed in our last meeting, several articles that are gonna come forward for the town meeting. Uh, next week, we will consider um, the um, suggestion to change the retainer, to modify the retainer for um, Murphy Hesse, our town council. Uh, and I believe we will have the um, broadband committee represented. They could not make it tonight. Uh, and we'll have uh, also, um, the uh, planning board, Lynn, will, did they confirm for us yet for next week, the planning board? No, I'll reach back out to the planning yeah, board. Yeah, we, we really have to get that one because that one's got some complications and some details in it that I think we really need to hear from them. And, you know, the, the planning board article is generally a little more complicated uh, than some of the other ones and require a great deal of explanation. So if we can just emphasize to them how important it is that they come. Uh, it will just speed things up because the last thing we want is for any of those to be um, uh, um, given short shrift. <clears throat> but tonight uh, we have Chase Berkeley. Chase, thank you for joining us, who is going to talk about the uh, stormwater um, article that's before us. Chase, hey, thanks. Thank you for having me. So this should be very quick. So we're bringing this article back. Uh, based on the feedback from the attorney general um, on a, upon approving the article that changed the bylaw back in 2020 at, at annual town meeting. So the, the attorney general had a very specific comment about <clears throat> the language used for assessing a lien versus a special assessment. Um, so it's just cleaning up that legal language based on the attorney general's comments. And, and that's the only change. Um, so basically the premise is if say we had a project and the developer, you know, went bust and disappeared and the town had to step in and fix some stormwater issue on the property in order to protect the public interest, we're allowed to assess those costs back to the, the property. And the way it's done is in the form of a, a municipal lien and not a special assessment, which is more of like a payback plan. And so the attorney general just recommended we cite the statute that allows us to do that in the bylaw itself. And that's what this language does. Chase, um, I think it might help if you could give us a, a specific, for instance, if, if you can come with them. Uh, I know there are many developments in town and just for the edification of the newer members of the warrant committee who may not be as familiar with the stormwater provisions, it would be helpful just to give a little background and a little reason why this is important. Sure, so say, say someone was developing a single family house and halfway through the project, uh, it stalled out for whatever reason and they had constructed some of the property, but not all of it. And every time it rained, mud and debris was being washed into the street and clogging the drains in the street. 
and uh, causing damage to the public system, the town could step in and fix that issue and then take track all those costs and, and apply them back to the property owner. And, and that would allow us to do that. So when we changed the bylaw uh, back in 2020, when we updated it, I should say, um, a lot of it was centered around new construction and giving the town more authority to have strict control over new construction. Cause that's typically when <clears throat> the most damage can occur. Uh, when, if you think about when a project starts, they usually cut down all the vegetation, kind of strip the land, um, and it makes it very vulnerable to, you know, high intensity rains like we saw all of July of this year. So, um, you know, that's when we want to have a lot of control and a lot of authority to, to make the developers put in control measures so that damage doesn't occur. And it, and it all relates back to water quality. So we're releasing that water into the nearby rivers and streams and we're trying to keep those as clean as possible what can be the magnitude uh, now if we if if this the uh, event that you described actually happened and the individual project did not go forward uh what is the range or what's the magnitude of what the lien could be uh, attached to that property yeah i haven't seen any specific ceiling requirements but i think it would just be in order of our actual costs so whatever it took the town to to rectify the situation uh, you know, we do that as efficiently as possible, obviously, but uh, we would be able to to recoup that cost. Um, when you talk about stormwater controls, once a project gets larger than one acre, um, some state requirements kick in, and there's also a state permit issued through DEP. So there's there's another level of authority above us that can step in for larger projects, which you know you can imagine would be more um, able to cause more damage if there was an issue. And initially, if you had to step in to do remediation uh, on a project of, of one single family home or uh, a group of 40 uh, that might be put in in, in some parts of town, uh, do you ordinarily use uh, town personnel or does it have to be um, uh, contract subcontracted out or how is it ordinarily done? Or I, I'm sure it can vary, but typically, how do you like to handle it? Yeah, so it doesn't happen very often, um, if at all, you know, since yeah. I've been, but, you know, we would. We'd of course try to handle it in-house, but sometimes we just need specialty equipment or uh, things that the town doesn't have direct access to and we need contractors to assist. So I imagine depending on the magnitude, it could be a combination, um, but we would we try to handle it in-house first. Great. Any questions for our DPW chief? <laughs> On this, so the so the language that we're the clarif we're talking language clarification at this point. Um, uh, again, Chase, um, not substantively altering the context of this uh, language, tuning it from an assessment to a lien, which doesn't necessarily require an immediate payback. That's correct, and it's a direct, basically, quote from the attorney general's approval letter for that article. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> any other any other questions? Any concerns that we need to bring forward? I mean, it's reasonably straightforward. This is, believe it or not, this is one of the easiest stormwater issues we've had to address. Mr. Chair. Yes, please. Ch Chase, thank you for coming and always for giving us uh, the good background and the necessary understanding. Uh, mm -hmm. Question is, uh, do we, when we do something like this, there's a and we understand that it's in line with the language. Do we expect this to result in a difference in the amount of, um, how do I say, uh, the amount of assessment? Will this in any way change um, revenue or, or, or income received from, from stormwater drainage assessment issues? Understood. Yeah, none whatsoever. Yep, this will not impact. It has no financial impact. And conversely, does it increase any of the expenses associated with stormwater administration to the town? <laughs> or under any circumstances do you think it could not no not this article no nope. this is already in the bylaws we're just kind of cleaning up what we're calling it okay Got it. thank you yeah anybody else terrific thank you chase thank you very much this is helpful we appreciate thanks everybody time. appreciate your time yep take care enjoy keep up the good work okay so he had a language it's a language issue uh that should be relatively straightforward um i think <clears throat> What we will do, uh, rather than vote on this right now, is uh, as we see the final language that comes forward and we have our recommendations in place, we'll just vote the role of them uh, when they come forward.
uh, and that will probably be, as I've talked to our uh, town council, probably sometime, if not at the next meeting, then at the following meeting, so we can begin to assign our comments, which again, will be reasonably perfunctory because at this point, I think we're looking at six articles. I have yet to hear that the fire station building committees are proposing anything for the special town meeting in October. So we may be, um, <laughs> excuse me, the gods may smile on us <clears throat> and give us just six articles to talk about. Unfortunately, we did not receive language on Article 1, which dealt with 41 Wharf Street uh, from the select board, which I had thought we would receive by now. So we're going to have to put that off, <coughs> excuse me, until our next meeting in August. Now, with regard to that, we will have uh, a couple of presentations uh, at that meeting. Mike Zulis, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> uh, and um, his committee will be uh, talking to us about the broadband uh article and we'll uh have a uh, there's a town meeting member who has asked to speak about the um expenses of our uh town council uh now that there's an article pending to change that retainer um <clears throat> i have asked that town meeting member to circulate to us a prece a, a summary of what she wants to say um <clears throat> in advance so you'll have a chance to review it and prepare any questions you have, because as I say, as we go through these items, I would like them to be as uh, efficiently discussed as possible. So uh, everybody's time is maximized uh, and we don't have to um, you know, get lost in the weeds, which we easily could be on issues of this nature because they can be somewhat arcane. Um, at that time also, I'm hoping Lynn and I have been trying to nail down the um, committee uh, the um the planning board to come and talk about their uh revised language on their article <clears throat> so that we can review that in in plenty of time because as i say the planning board articles are among the more complex because they deal with uh <coughs> excuse me all kinds of um uh, language changes and 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 um oftentimes one bylaw may even be in direct opposition to another which we have reviewed and seen uh from one time or another uh and then we have to do a little bit of unraveling um, which is kind of fun anyway, but, you know, at, at this point in the year, we really don't want to get uh, too overwhelmed with um, some of the details of these issues. So, um, <coughs> I beg your pardon, sorry. <clears throat> I've been dealing with uh, late summer allergies, so uh, do forgive me. <clears throat> uh, do we have any uh, issues that we have to bring up for new business at this point? <coughs> George, not necessarily, um, not necessarily an issue, but I did see in the Milton Times this week that we had received um, $100,000 from Curry College on the pilot. And I know that that has been a couple of, we've had several conversations about that in the past. I'm wondering if we could get that on a, a future agenda. Obviously not the 16th, because it seems like that's overloaded, but maybe um, down the line. We can, absolutely. I had seen that as well. And um, Ken Quigley, who is, as many of you know, the president of Curry, is himself a Milton native. He and, in fact, he and I went to, to to grade school together. We were at Pierce Junior High School together. Kenny is an old friend of mine, and I was a trustee of Curry for many years. Uh, and and Curry is, <clears throat> for all of the problems that have beset higher education, Curry has really set forward and, and been as good a corporate citizen and institutional academic citizen of Milton as you can ask for. Uh, they're they're not rolling in dough, but uh, that they have made an effort to pay something in lieu of taxes is remarkable, <clears throat> particularly given the year that they've had. I mean, that every institution has had, it's been tough, <coughs> excuse me, with revenues uh, and student expenses uh, in the condition that they've been in. Um, we, we certainly can talk about that. We have talked about pilot programs uh, here at the Warrant Committee for a number of years, uh, something that we have felt should be emphasized and um, and, and really uh, uh, addressed in a very significant fashion because we do have some uh, really uh, large um, <clears throat> institutional citizens in town. Um, and there's been a feeling, I think, certainly on the Warren Committee and I think among others here in the town that perhaps they could do a little more uh, than they've done uh, mm -hmm. to offset some of the expenses that the town has borne to make sure that it's the type of place they want to operate and where parents want to send their, their children as students. Um, and there's a cost associated with all of these things, of course, but I think that's a very good thing. But again, thank you uh, officially uh, on behalf of us uh, to Curry for making that contribution. Every little bit helps. 
Um, at our next meeting, I believe we will have um, um, some members of the select board also who will address a couple of the other issues. I'm hoping 41 Wharf Street will come up. Uh, if we don't hear about that one, that may be stricken from the warrant. But uh, again, there's there are a lot of moving parts at this point. So um, I think because we have uh, a reasonably full agenda next week and we've dealt with the business we have to deal with tonight, I don't see that there's a reason why we have to really uh, continue the meeting unless anybody has something else that they need to bring up right now. And I'm guessing that the Zoom format <clears throat> works for us at this point. <coughs> Excuse me, the town, we do have the latitude to meet in person, but given that it's still August and vacation time, I, I think this is, if, as long as we're allowed to do it, I think this is incredibly convenient. Not that I don't want to see all of your shining faces in person, um, uh, because I, I really enjoyed being all together, but I, I honestly think this is probably the most efficient thing we can do under the circumstances. Um, uh, unless anybody has another objection, then we can adjourn until the 9th. I think also we should plan to have, I'm sorry, I'm adjourn until the 16th. I think also we should plan on one more meeting for the 23rd to do our votes and make the assignment for the comments so that we can get a little bit of a break uh, in anticipation of the uh, final weeks of summer. I know some of you may have kids you have to take off to school and uh, all kinds of fun things like that and or a last weekend away or something like that. And I certainly don't want to uh, uh, intrude on, on those plans. And some of us just want to stay at the beach just a little bit longer. So uh, I'm not going to lie about that. But anyway, uh, if there is no other business, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn until next Monday. So moved. So moved. And we have a second. Second. Any discussion? If not, Lynn, please take the roll. John. Yes. Kathy. Yes. Stephen. Yes. Kristen. Yes. Erin. Yes. Dave. Yes. Lorraine. Yes. Emily. Yes. George. Yes. Muhammad. Yes. And Oheni. Yes. That's it. Terrific. Thank you all very much. Um, brief meetings are my favorite. Uh, we do actually we did get some stuff done, but next week we'll get more done and we'll be on our way to getting the warrant prepared for the special meeting. So again, thank you all. Hope you have a great week. Stay dry if you're in a rainy place and don't get sunstroke if you're in someplace sunny. Thank you all very much and good evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay.